So when you walk your glider out, always keep the glider downwind of you. If you turn around and face the glider this way, it's going to inflate in your face and gift wrap you. If you have a hat, put it on backwards. If you can't hear, get closer. I'm lifting my butt. The lower one side. Watch the height of the riser. It's not about contorting my body, it's about simply making one riser shorter than the other, right here. If those risers are the same level, it doesn't matter how you're contorting your body, you're doing nothing, zero. And so it's all about changing the height of the risers. Notice my chest is inside the risers, and my chin is literally touching or bouncing off of the risers. I'm so close to it back and chest forward. Everybody wants to do this, and it makes it much more difficult. If you get your chest inside the risers, you can actually pull down with your armpit to make one riser shorter than the other, and then sidestep under it. Like balancing a broomstick on your finger. If it falls that way, you need to move under it. Okay. Now, that's when it's above you. ground, you turn, 45 degree angle, face the glider as it comes up, turn, walk, pull. Feet together. Now let's do that again. Yeah, don't be doing the splits. As soon as you do the splits, you fight the glider. If the glider goes to the side and you're doing the splits, you start fighting and leaning against it, which causes you to it. I literally can't bring the glider up if I didn't weight shift correctly because if you're not doing it right you're not just wrong you're actually backwards and there's a lot of people out there acting as instructors who are literally teaching it not wrong backwards to what's correct so it's absolutely critical if you look look how much different the length and the risers in so not in, not only am I doing it backwards I'm doing it horribly, horribly backwards. I need to be facing this way. If I turn this way and the glider's over there, I'm weight shifting so hard, you, wrong, you're gonna end up spinning the glider before you can actually bring it up. Uh, okay, if it's sideways to you, you can fly just the side that's open. <laughs> Walk, and then face the glider once it's up. And then you go into Look at the little teardrop right there in the middle. I need to stay under it. 
So watch as the glider comes up to the right. Whoops, turn right, walk under the teardrop. Back to brakes. Lean walk full because it's now above me. And so when you see us bringing the glider up perfect every time, it's not because the glider came up perfect, it's because we made it come up perfect. So I made it come up to the right because I turned to the left as I pulled. So if I turn left and pull, it shoots off to the right. Dominator, baby. But stupid safe. So you have a huge amount of control in the turn. It is turn, walk, pull in that order. The pull is literally the last thing you do. So if you're standing there, pull, 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 and you didn't lean and walk, you're missing the most important pieces. First, you have to turn. Then you walk under the glider, then pull. Because if you didn't turn and you didn't walk, the pull isn't going to do jack squat unless it was really close to dead center. Okay, so the glider's going to come up to the right. I turn right. I walk back at a 45 degree angle to the right. And then I can't touch any brake. This is the time you have zero brake is when the glider's trying to fly. When it's coming up, if you pull brakes, you stall the glider. So we're going to go zero brakes till it's up. Once it's up, I lean walk pull. To make it come up right, turn, lean, it's above me, lean, walk, pull, lean, lean and walk, lean and walk, lean and walk, lean, changing the height of the risers, grab a riser with the armpit, there you go, do not turn, lean, it's really hard, I mean it's stupid simple, when you're standing there looking at it, as soon as the glider goes up, your brain becomes fungus and no longer functions. <laughs> it's like you don't want to do something really simple. It's like you're looking at it and you're like, well, duh, that's a lean, that's a turn. Well, when the glider comes up, it's like, that's why I'm telling you so many times and trying to show you clearly the difference. Now, there's different ways to describe it. Another way to describe it would be to touch my toes. So if the glider goes left, I can lean towards my left toe. Whoop hand to the left toe. Notice how his chest stays straight facing that way. That's a lean, not a turn. Lean. If you put your hands out, it's easier to tell if you're turning because you start spinning like a helicopter if you turn. Where if your hands are out, you lean it. The next way to think about it would be to just rest on your elbow to your knee. Glider goes left, elbow to the knee. Elbow to the knee, walk. Elbow to the knee, or elbow towards the knee. I gotta make it go farther to actually need that much weight shift. Lean, walk. Lean, walk. And there we go. Okay, why is it so critical? But right now you don't understand. <laughs> it's critical for later. Right now we have you on tiny gliders that don't drag you all over the beach. They're pulling, but they're not dragging you on your head. And you're standing on your feet. If I come over and give you a shove, you probably won't fall down. I could come over and push you as hard as I can, and you'd probably go, what the freak are you doing? And you wouldn't fall down. We put 70 pounds of motor gas and reserve on you, and I push you, you're going down. You're gonna fall. You're so much less stable with the motor on. And when you go to fly, you're going to have a huge glider to start. Some big, large, extra large, something like that, depending on your weight. And so if you don't use the pieces correctly, and that glider falls to here, it's going to yank you on your face. Because you're less stable, because there's weight on your back. And you have a lot more drag, because it's a much bigger glider producing a lot more lift. That's why it's so critical that you get all the pieces perfectly. Now, if we stuck you here in six mile an hour of wind, perfect conditions, yeah, you can get lucky doing it wrong, but we don't want you lucky. We want you to practice till you never get it wrong, not to, you know, practice till you get it right. Big difference. Lean, walk, pull. Glider comes up. Turn, and now, lean, walk, pull. Glider collapses. Here, you don't care. You don't care if it collapses. Just keep on doing 
just ignore it. If it collapses, just keep it from turning. Lean, lean, lean. Now I'm way overdoing it because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Normally, you don't lean near that much. You only lean what you need to. So now I'm gonna do it and just kind of ignore you guys and just kind of do it like I would do it. Very small. Much smaller directions, but while I'm demonstrating, I'm doing much more exaggerated, just only so you can see what I'm doing. That's why I'm going so far. So just make sure you're not overdoing it. You don't want to weight shift all the way to maximum if uh, the glider only went two inches. Okay, next piece. When you lean, your butt has to go up. If you, your brain will naturally, if you lean this way, your butt will roll the same way, canceling out what you just did. And it'll do absolutely zero. And you're like, I'm leaning. No, you're not. You're doing nothing because your butt is rolling this way. Your butt has got to stick up the other way. Also, don't crouch because that cancels what you're doing. So it's head down, butt up. Head down, butt up. Next, you need to keep your body level at a level altitude. If you go like this, your body's going up and down and you're surging and lulling the glider. When you drop, you increase lo loading and the glider will shoot forward. So when you're in the middle, you kind of keep your knees bent. When you go to the side, your legs are straight, man. So that your body is at the same altitude. But wait, it gets harder. <laughs> There's also five other things which is raising and lowering your stance using the loading to control pitch and to keep it from overflying you. I back up, lower my stance, I can raise my stance to unload it, or I can lower my stance to increase loading and it goes that way. Raise my stance to unload it as it falls away, I can walk towards it. There we go. And then I want it to Stop. I stop, lower my stance, surges, woo! Okay, so you can use raising and lowering your stance to increase loading. So if your glider's about to stall, run, drop your stance. Watch that again. I ran backwards and I dropped my butt, both of which increase loading. Here's your stall, zero brake, drop the butt, run. Every single time over and over. If your glider stalls, you instantly go to zero brake pressure. That and when you're pulling up the glider are the only two times you would literally go to zero brake pressure because it's trying to fly and you, you don't want to step on the gas and the brakes at the same time. So the glider stalls, zero, run, drop your butt. As soon as you get under control, slow to a stop, make the glider stop you that again don't stop your body don't run 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 stop or the glider keeps going when you get running backwards you pull brake and make the glider bring you slowly to a stop it's all about the glider controlling you not you running around where you want to go dragging the glider behind you very very critical the glider controls you so another thing you're learning in super training that you don't really realize reflexes to feel a stall and respond to it without even thinking, which you're going to do thousands of times before the end of the class, simply because you'll screw up, you'll pull too much brake, and you'll stall the glider. Whoop. Zero brake, drop your butt, run every single time. <laughs> Don't get lazy. <laughs> a lot of times, people will want to give up. Oh, it's falling. You just quit and stop. No, the most valuable practice is what you do when you're about to lose it. That's where you put in 100% effort. So you stall the glider, boom, you move, you take off like a bullet, get off the brakes, turn, walk, pull, drop your butt, use every piece to recover that glider over and over. And it'll be the same in the air. If we're ever to get near stall point, you would feel the brakes go mushy, 
and you would respond exactly the same. Hands up. But how do you run in the sky? Well, interestingly enough, your brain will replace running with throttle. <laughs> so when you want to run in the sky, ah, throttle, get out in front of the glider. Same sort of thing. And it should be automatic. We shouldn't even have to explain it to you because your body will know you need to get out in front of the glider because it's about to pass you. Brakes, throttle, get out in front of it. Okay, here we go, glider stalls, stall. Get off the brakes, run backwards. Glider stall, stall. Get off the brakes, run backwards. Um, now I'm creating too much energy just for demonstration, but again, glider stall, back up, boom, pull hard. Okay, I'm doing it wrong because I'm trying to demonstrate. So I'm actually creating that surge by pulling too hard. I should pull exactly the, the tension on the risers that it takes for the glider to come up and stop by itself. Glider stalls, pull. <laughs> and I messed up. I flunked. Let's try and do it wrong again. I just got an app for how to do it wrong. <laughs> it's difficult to get that wrong. So, glider stalls, hands up, back up. Just don't create so much energy that you chase yourself. Same thing with your launch. You'll see people all over the internet, when they go to do a forward launch or reverse launch, the glider comes up and it shoots up so fast they have to slam brakes to stop it. Well, they created the energy by how hard you pull. If I pull really hard, the glider's gonna build energy. I have to pull quickly to get the glider coming up, but then depending on how much energy I have, I can move forwards or backwards and control and ease off the loading on the riser so I'm not pulling so hard. So I can pull, give it some energy, and then ease off. So it came up and I never had to hit the brakes. Glider's up. So I didn't have to stop a surge because I didn't create a surge. Anytime you find you have to slam brakes to stop the glider, it was your fault for creating the energy because you pulled too hard, maybe you ran too fast, maybe you lifted too hard, or you dropped your butt too much. To get it off the ground, you have to give it a distinct loading. So you do have to hit it fairly hard to get it going, but then once it, it's coming up, can back off the loading by moving towards it or just not pulling so hard. Depends on how much wind you have. Lift, get some energy. And then I'm moving towards it. Unloaded. I can also bring it down the hands. Although with this life of glider, I would have to run really fast. <laughs> trying to recover the glider. Cross-controlling because that's where you're at. And here we go. 
Well, it goes to the side. I lean back, I get my tug of war. If I turn right, the glider comes up. And if I turn left, the glider comes down. Turn right, glider comes up. Now, I want the glider to recover, so I'm gonna turn completely 90 degrees to the glider and walk at a 45, a little quicker to start, and then slow down depending on how much energy you have. Lean, stop. Turn, walk, pull. Turn, walk, pull. Stall, bring it up with loading, run backwards. Okay, glider sideways. Don't freak out and panic when your glider goes sideways. Uh-oh, it collapsed. Who cares? It's a dominator. Just keep flying, ignore that, don't panic. Okay, wingtips on the ground. It's just like pulling it up from the ground. You have to start a little bit faster, and then once you have enough energy and the glider's coming up, slow down. But you need all the pieces. I have my turn, I'm facing the ocean. I'm facing the same direction the glider's facing. Now, I'm gonna walk 45 degree angle and turn towards the glider. Up she comes, and it takes almost no effort at all. Glider comes down. Facing the glider, there's almost not enough wind. Okay, so, you'll see online, people with a glider in front of them that don't turn, and they'll pull brakes to bring the glider up, telling you how smart they are. See if we can do it. Nope. They got away with it because they had three to four mile an hour more wind than I have right now. You can only get away with doing it wrong if you have a ton more wind and just the perfect conditions. And then if you had more wind of that, they couldn't do it because doing it wrong would create too much drag and they would be getting drug in their face. So you have to do it correctly in order to do it in all conditions. So by not turning, it forced me to use so much brake, I stalled the glider and it just hit the ground. Okay, so I'm facing the glider. I lean back against it, get my tug of war. I turn 90 degrees. Gotta get my weight shift. That's number one, turn. Then I walk 45 degrees under the glider, into the wind, face the glider. And I used a little bit of right brake. And you're gonna do this a thousand times a day as your glider falls out of the sky and hits the ground. And so you need to be really good at turn, walk, pull, right brake, right brake, left brake, stop it. Boom, chest forward, lean, walk, pull, lean, walk, pull. But not like I'm doing, I'm overdoing it to show you. Let's do it again, let's do it again. Okay, this time, watch my right hand, my brake hand, turn, one fingertip of pressure, just feeling, walk. See that brake hand? That brake. Boom, glider stops above me. Okay, the next one I'm yelling at for you at constantly is relax your arm. Everybody's doing this. <laughs> That's a huge one. That one's very difficult to get out of your brain and get out of your body because you're too tense. It's like a steering wheel. My arms are completely relaxed, resting on the steering wheel. But I'm not crossing my arms. I have left for left, right for right. Left hand to the left side, right hand to the right side. Relax, tension. There is steady, consistent loading from the weight of my arms on the brakes. I'm not going to complete zero brakes. Watch, the glider comes down. It's at a wingtip. Look at my left brake. My left arm is completely limp, but my finger is just touching that left brake. So I, I have the slack out of the brake and I can feel if I push forward to where it goes slack, I now have no feel of what's going on with the glider and zero control. So you just relax that arm. You're not pulling brake, just enough to keep the slack out of the brake. Notice the tension on my right. Keep in mind you should have all four fingers in there. I'm only doing this so you can see how little the pressure is. I turn, I'm gonna add quarter inch, walk, boom. Relax the arms, tension on the brakes. Steady tension, steady tension. 
There you go. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, I'm gonna slap you in the right side of your head. Close your eyes. What? Close your eyes. All right. You're gonna block it. All right, ready? <laughs> <laughs> right side. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, he's responding to what he feels. You can actually respond faster to what you feel than what you see. Now open your eyes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, now I'm going to touch him. Close your eyes. <laughs> it's much quicker because he's going by what he feels. What you feel, you respond much faster because Mike is an awesome karate man, so thanks, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> slap you in the head. <laughs> That's it definitely had enough on it the <laughs> They super down slapping people in there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, you respond faster to what you feel than what you see. So if your arms are relaxed and you're feeling the pressure in the brake and the pressure changes, boom, you're going to instantly respond much faster than standing there with brakes slapped, looking up and trying to respond to loading without feel just by looking. Not to mention, you don't even know what you're really seeing yet. So it's much better to feel. You feel the loading increase, woo, ease off. You feel the loading drop, woo, we need more loading. Increase loading. So it's all about feel, feel, but you gotta relax and keep that steady tension on the brakes. If I see this, that's wrong. You just totally muscled. You're holding your arms up with muscle. Imagine on your steering wheel driving like this. Do you ever drive like this? No. Do you drive pulling up on the steering wheel? No. Relax your arms. You're trying to be lazy and use as little effort as possible. Very little path of least resistance, as little energy, make it look super simple, because it is as long as you're not fighting with boxing match. If you box it, it boxes you and usually it wins. So, very important, relax your hands on those brakes. Okay, go. I mean, the, the difference, I can see it from a hundred yards away, and I'm like, get here, get relax, take a chill pill. Relax the arms, relax the arms. Look at the arms, it should look effortless. Mean. And then look how much prey. Okay, I'm dropping the glider down. Watch this correction. Turn, move onto the glider. I got all three. If I try and do just brakes, glider goes over here. I'm gonna do it wrong. I'm gonna save it with brakes. I can't. It stalled because I'm weight shifting backwards. I'm telling it to do the opposite thing with my body as what I'm doing with my hand. So you just won't see people do it on the internet. And if you see someone doing it wrong that brings it up, trying to do a demonstration, they had about five more mile an hour wind where it's overcoming their incompetence. But guaranteed, you go less wind or more wind, they can't do it because the technique is wrong. You can see very clearly that that glider would not come up when I'm weight shifting backwards, which is literally standing exactly the direction I started. So it's absolutely critical, turn, walk, pull. Okay, pull it up. Now, when I pull it up, 
the right side of the glider is a wanted mess. It's not doing anything. So I fly the side that's open. Only this riser. Turn. Lift. Lean up. She comes. Turn, walk full. All three. Bring it up. Okay, I want to show this again. I'm not turning. Now I'm going to try and save the glider with brakes. The glider stalls. Because I'm doing it wrong. I didn't turn and I didn't walk. And the interesting thing is, is if I do that 14,000 more times, it's going to do the same thing every time. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you practice the whole rest of the class wrong, it's not going to get any righter. <laughs> you have to turn, walk, pull. You have to turn, walk, pull. And turn is the very first one. If it shoots off to the side, and I didn't turn, you're gonna lose it. But if you turn and walk, it's gonna give you lots of time to figure out which brake to pull. So it'll extend that amount of time that you have to respond if you get that turn and walk. Okay, let's fly the open side of the glider. See how he turned to the right? That side. Even though the glider's still on the ground, he still turned to the right. that way, because it's on that side. Open that side, turn, walk, pull. Lighter, up she comes. There we go. Now, do you think I can do it wrong again and have a different result? The lighter comes to the right. Now run this time. Kind of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect demonstration. <laughs> Why'd I fall down? Didn't turn. Yep. That's right. Because if you didn't turn, you're running backwards. If you turn, you're running the direction you're facing. I'm not going to fall down running facing that way. But everybody starts running this way, you're going down. Even I fell down. I didn't do that on purpose. That was accidental. He hit the tiny the sand dune and fell. Wrong and naturally happened. What happens to all the students when they're doing it wrong? Because you're running backwards, you hit a, anything. You hit a little rut, a whip, a weed, a stick, bam, you trip and fall down. Because you're facing the wrong way. That's why you fell down. Um, or you unloaded the glider, and that's why you fell down. If you fall over backwards, it's because you didn't load the glider. Okay, run backwards, load the glider, turn. Okay, now the glider goes to the side. This time I'm going to do it correctly. Notice the huge difference in the glider. <laughs> That's how effortless it is doing it right. Turn, walk, pull. Huge world of difference between super training and false training. And I don't know of one other school in the world that is actually training people correctly in the correct location where you can actually do it all day and get the sheer amount of hours to actually burn these things into reflexes. Because I could show you this 50 times, it's not going to make you any better. You might understand it, but you still have to practice it for hours and hours until the glider goes sideways, boom, you turn, you walk, you pull. That's got to be your reflex. It has to be your automatic response or it's not going to work. Watch what happens if I'm a half second too late. Half second, turn. Too late. It's upside down. It's going to just fall face first, overfly, and go to the ground. Up you come. Turn, walk, pull. Turn, walk, pull. The uh, class after class, the weird thing is the guys who don't do very well are the ones who ignore the words coming out of my mouth and they just stand there and pull left and right, left and right, left and right. Why? Because it's like, okay, I know how to do this. I'm just going to do what I know. And if you skip the turn and the walk, you're just missing the pieces. You have to practice what's hard, even though you're going to royally screw it up. Keep trying over and over, whittling off little fractions of a second of your response times 
until the correct response is the only response and the instant response. Let's go flying! Woo! <laughs> Are there any questions? <laughs> Did I make that abundantly clear? Do you really understand the gra you know, gravity of what I'm saying? <laughs> Turn, walk, pull. Can I control the glider? Turn, walk, pull. Or if it's above you, lean, walk, pull. You have to get the pieces. Get the pieces down. What? Okay, let's go play. TWP. 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 We had a shirt. I think on the back of some of his training shirts. Right. Oh, that actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it.